Hi folks, so we're going to take a deeper dive now into an example of a Nyquist plot and its stability analysis where the loop transfer function has some poles on the imaginary axis. So we have to use the pesky um, modified Nyquist contour. So we start the Nyquist analysis by making a pole zero map of the loop transfer function and there we can see the poles on the imaginary axis. We'll also take a look at a root locus of this. But first, the uh, modified Nyquist contour, here it is. Little loop-de-loop -loop around the um, uh, poles on the imaginary axis. Here's the root locus, and so now we see the sort of thing that we're expecting to find, at least for positive K analysis, that as we increase K from K equals zero to 3.4, the system is unstable, and then it stabilizes for the very, very large values of K. We'll let's start making the Nyquist contour as we go up the imaginary axis from A to B on the, um, con on the Nyquist contour. We get this little squiggly bit over here on the um, Nyquist plot. Very nice. We have a, a nice little finite value of A that corresponds to this, which you can get by just setting S equal to zero in the loop transfer function. So just by sort of staring at it, if we set S equal to zero, we would get um, uh, 90 over four, it looks like, for that crazy thing. All right, let me get rid of that. Okay. So keep going. Um, I've shown a couple more pieces now. This bit here is actually this bit, but the interesting part is this piece which corresponds to looping around that little cutout. Now, what's happening there is if you were to draw arrows from all those poles and zeros to, oops, let me do it like this, all the poles and zeros to a point on the Nyquist contour, I'll do these poles and zeros first, as you go around this Nyquist contour, like so, the contribution of all those brown arrows in terms of phase is a grand total of zero because that is a very tiny little cutout even though I've drawn it finite size is infinitesimally small so the phase of all those bits is zero however the phase due to this pole as it goes around like that is 180 degrees and guess what that's where the 180 degrees manifests itself so this black bit right here is the 180 degrees that you get from rotating around that little tiny cutout, even though it's tiny, tiny radius. Okay. And now we can go on our merry way around the negative direction, and we get that. And I had to use a little bit of artistic license to um, show that little loop out at infinity. Let's see, there we go, and more of that, and then we put in our directions and pick off a couple points. Those points are the um, places where the Nyquist contour crosses the real axis, and that's important because that divides up the real axis for us in terms of evaluating stability for different values of K. So we'll start with the positive K analysis, and really what we started with is realizing that there are no poles of the loop transfer function encircled by the Nyquist contour. So P is equal to zero. That means that any encirclements we get over here is going to imply instability of some flavor. So let's look at large values of K first. So we're focusing in on this and that's at negative 0.3 and so we just say that's our negative 1 over k point and solve for k which is about 3.3 those are just sort of approximate by the way and now if we look for k greater than 3.3 which is this little piece in here we see that there are no encirclements if we draw a little ray out like so we get a um, plus one encirclement from that, and 
a negative uh, encirclement from that, and so the net is zero. So n is equal to zero, and z, which is p plus n, is zero. So it's stable. Nice. Now let's look at small values of k, k less than 3.3. Now we have two encirclements, positive encirclements. So we have two right half plane poles. And that's exactly what we see right there for, for um, small values of k, k less than 3.3. It's actually 3.4. Yeah, okay. As I say, this number was just an approximation, just sort of snatched it off the plot. Now let's do negative k analysis. So we do a similar thing. We take a look at this point that's at uh, 1.5, and we then claim that that's our negative 1 over k. So k is equal to negative 2 thirds at that point. So for k less than negative 2 thirds, that's the purple region. We have one right half plane pole. We can see that by drawing a ray out like so. We have one encirclement, one right half plane pole. And then for, uh, how should we call it, small magnitude values of k, so k from negative 0.67 to 0, we have no encirclements, right? Because if I'm out here somewhere, I can scoot past that uh, goofy 180 degree stuff here and here. So I have no encirclements, and the crazy thing is stable. Very fun. So now let's go into MATLAB, and we'll take a look at what, well, we'll take a look at, how about this? We'll look at Nike D. Then we'll have a peek at what uh, MATLAB gives us. And, oops, there it is. Huh? It's like a cooking show. Um, so let's close all. Clear var CLC. So start with a clean slate, and we'll go Nike D. There's what you have for that. You can um, take a look at the script if you'd like to see how all those little uh, cutouts are evaluated. There's a couple extra goodies on here, and that's the main reason for pointing this out, is I have the unit circle in black and a couple of these constant M circles. But um, you can find out about all those good things in some other screencasts. Okay, nice. So now let's take a look at what MATLAB generates. The loop transfer function is G. And it's this thing. It's out here at 10 to the 14th. That's really not what we want to see. So we'll zoom in. It's one of the options around the negative 1 area. And it kind of looks like our Nyquist plot, but a little bit, maybe a little bit harder to interpret. Um, but there it is. So this is just one of the features that I wanted you to see that the Nyquist command in MATLAB, it's right, but it can give you some things that are maybe a little bit um, odd looking and, and require some additional thought to, to sort out. But if we were to click on here, we can see that, that we get the same 1.5 that I had in the, in the sketch. And over here, I got a click in just nice. We get about negative 0.3 for that point. So that gives us at least a quick understanding of the um, um, uh, you know, ranges for how we want to evaluate k. Well, now let's do that evaluation of k. So the first thing we looked at was for k greater than 3.3, we found the system was stable. So, um, and for k less than 3.3, um, roughly, the system was unstable with two right half plane poles. So let's start with that one. Let's go with k equal, I don't know, 0.5, just, you know, a sample. And we'll create a closed loop um, transfer function using the feedback command. And I'll just go like so. And, well, we can take a look at it. And we can see that the denominator is all positive, so there's a, a fighting chance that the thing is stable, but let's take a look at that. Um, this is the hard way. Um, but it's not. 
and it should be. And so there's two right half plane poles, which is exactly what our analysis said should happen. That is that for k less than 3.3, the thing was unstable. If you remember the root locus, we were going into the right half plane uh, as soon as we left k equals 0. And this little example was for k equal 0.5. Well, now let's check the other side of that. So for k greater than 3.3, so how about we let k equal 4, and we'll just um, cycle through this again. There's the closed loop transfer function, and there's the roots. Cool. It's all stable. Now let's look at k less than negative 0.67, and according to the analysis, it said that we should have one right half plane pole. So let's go, let's see, less than negative point seven. So I'm just going to go k equal negative 1. That's less than negative point six seven. And then we'll go here. And then we'll go there. Look at that. One right half plane pole, exactly what the Nyquist analysis told us. But here's the crazy thing. So let's go with k greater than negative point six seven. So that would be something like um, negative 0.5. That's greater than negative 0.67. There's the closed loop transfer function. And there is the closed loop poles. Crazy, crazy stuff. Um, now we have the closed loop transfer function. For, so just for yucks, let's take a look at the, the step response for this thing. It's stable but it is a little bit odd. So here I'm giving it a positive step input. You know, plus one is going into this, and I end up at negative three. Um, you could use that. You would just have to sort of invert your commands and scale them by three, and then it would go the other way, which might be what you want. Okay, so it's stable, but it has some interesting properties associated with it. All right, so there's one example of a Nyquist analysis where you have a loop transfer function with poles on the imaginary axis and all the cool negative K analysis you can do. Enjoy.